I'm back to talk about my project of predicting bus rapid transit ridership using Python. Because as much as I like to build web apps, maybe let's see if I can do something more. So I'm going to build a fancy web app. I did stats and CS at school, so I thought maybe I could actually put these skills to some use. That's what I'm trying to do with this project. Do something where I can build a model, train it, deploy it, and then have a nice UI so that you can actually interact with it. So that's the plan. I've gotten to the point where I have the data, and I'm going to walk you through how I've done that. Just getting started, this is what Google has on the process for data preparation and feature engineering. I am not going to remake this diagram because somebody's already made it for me. So applying that to my situation, first I define the problem. And it's really, can we see where BRT will be successful? And that will inform where new systems can be built. Because BRT is already the light, cheap version of, of light rail, which is already the light, cheap version of subways. So you really want to make sure you get the best bang for your buck. And as BRTs get more popular across North America as alternatives for light rail, it's important that they actually work. That's the larger problem. And in scoping it down to something that you can actually solve with numbers, I thought, hey, maybe I can predict BRT ridership in a given area in the US. Because then that would let you look at an area and see if you get riders. Very simple. Keep in mind the point of this project. I want to play with this data. I want to play with making models and deploying them. So we'll just move on for now. And this is the bulk of the video, how I constructed the data set and transformed the data. It didn't follow this exact, like this isn't, this isn't prescriptive, but a couple of things you have to do is, well, find the data, some feature engineering, clean the data, split the data, whatever. So this is what I did. This is what I did. First is exploration. I actually have to find the data sources. So I use two main data sources for this. One is the National Transit Database that gives you ridership. Yeah, gives you ridership data for all the BRT systems, all the transit systems in the US, actually. And also the US Census, which gives you a lot of demographic data on a zip code level, which is what I wanted because I want to eventually predict ridership based on zip code. Because zip codes, I think, are interpretable. They're easy to get a hold of. From a usability standpoint, I think zip codes make sense. And this is my general process is I, I first found this data that I could potentially use to predict ridership. So I have a directory for notebooks, which is just where I did my exploratory analysis first. Typical Jupyter notebooks, they're not production ready, they're not very efficient. And then eventually when I figure out a methodology and uh, a way of working that I'm comfortable with, I turn that code into actual Python modules. If you watched my previous video about using ChatGPT to help me set this up, this is that structure. And this is me sort of taking that as a starting point and going further and actually doing the code myself. So that's a bit of an overview of what I've done so far. And just a reminder that is within this constructing data set and transforming data phase. So let's jump into the code. Hopping into VS Code, we see the same directory structure that I talked about. Doing all the work in model, and then I'll go through data. I have two directories, processed and raw. We're not gonna look at processed yet. Raw, I have subdirectories for all the systems. Within there, I have these CSVs of the zip codes, the relevant zip codes for that system and the year. And I'll show you how I actually got that. So we start with notebooks. Yes, notebooks. This exploratory analysis, data retrieval, pre-process. The notebooks, it's a bit of a mess, but exploratory analysis, that is the first step. So this is a very rough cut at the data. Actually, maybe I can pull up a video now of me going through the NTD website and the US Census website to try and find this data because the APIs there, they didn't quite work for me on a zip code level. I couldn't find what I was looking for. So what I ended up doing was going to the network tab, looking at where they pulled the data from for these tables because these tables are just, they're pulling data from somewhere on that website. So I got the URL for those tables and then just kind of treated that as my own API. So does that count as an API? I don't know. I got the data I needed in a semi-automated, semi-efficient way, but this is that exploration because I pulled in a CSV of that data, and then what I had to do was find the indices of the data that I was looking for. So this is an example of income data from this URL, and looping through that response to get the index of data, which in this case was index 161. So this is not best practices, but again, I couldn't find the official API that worked for me. So this is the next best thing. After exploratory analysis, I'll show you the data retrieval because this doesn't do anything yet. This exploratory analysis, it gets me looking at the data. It doesn't actually do anything. This data retrieval, then you can see here, I did it for Cleveland just as, as a test before generalizing it. For income, I 
create an empty data frame. This is that URL that I'm grabbing directly. I feed in the, the zip code in the year that I, that format that I found, you see this 161 index, putting into a, a data frame, kind of just figuring out how to do this for all the metrics that I'm interested in looking at. So income, population, household split, that sort of thing. So that's how I did the data retrieval for the census data. Did a similar exercise for the National Transit Database ridership data. So this is the dependent variable. This was a bit different or a bit more difficult because the NTD data, if I can show you actually, yes, the NTD data, it's actually zipped. So it's not that complicated, but it's something that I hadn't really dealt with much before. So I just had to unzip it and do the manipulation that way. Again, same logic of trying to figure out how to unzip this data and get it into this raw directory. So after creating these two notebooks, I have an idea of how I'm going to get the raw data into CSVs into this raw directory. And after this data retrieval process, I still use notebooks to go through the pre-processing and cleaning process because what I have so far is a subdirectory for every system, Cleveland, for example, I have these individual CSVs. And what I ideally want to do is something like this. This is the actual data set that I ended up creating after joining things together. You can see ridership. Okay, this is actually my dependent variable. Everything else is an independent variable. So I want to get it to this state from individual metric CSVs on a per system level. So that involves a lot of joining and there's cleaning that I should do before, during, after that. So that's what this notebook is, going through the logic of how to import all these raw CSVs and how to join them together. And then here's just figuring out how to clean it because there's, let's look at this, there's always, there's always messy data. It's, that is what these two notebooks are for. And after figuring all that out, I turned it into Python modules in this source directory, data, these three things, transitdata.py, makedataset, and preprocess.py. And I'll go through those briefly now. So I'll actually go through the scripts first, makedataset and preprocess.py. I think that might make more sense. Makedataset, as the name suggests, its role is to create all these CSVs in an automated way. So you could just run one command and then you can create, you can populate all these sub, well, create these subdirectories and then populate them with the relevant CSVs. I have a main function. I have a directory of systems and zip codes. And what I'm doing here is for every system I have, I am creating this BRT data object and I'm running this save BRT data function, which I've defined here. And then after that, that function does what I need to do. It creates these CSVs. And then after that, I just run, I create an NTD data object. I run that saved, I run a, a class function of save data and that's it. That's what make data set does. Save BRT data, what that does is I tried to abstract away the the messy stuff of of like saving stuff to CSVs, file paths, whatever, just by creating these functions for the BRT data object. I don't know if this is actually a design pattern, if it's like facade or something. But basically, save BRT data takes an object and just runs these functions that abstract away the messiness. And then once you're done with that, you're done. So that's make data set. What preprocess does is after all these raw CSVs are created, I want to turn them into CSVs on a per system basis. That's what these processed CSVs are. Metrics per year, but on a per system basis. So I've aggregated the, the data for, for all the zip codes because this information from the NTD database only comes on a per system level, not a per zip code level. So that's what preprocess.py is doing. I have the locations. I'm loading in the existing NTD data that I've already downloaded in makedataset.py. And then for every system in this location array, I want to deal with it in the form of a BRT data object. I'm loading the existing data I've downloaded, and then I call this process data. And process data, I first process the BRT data, then I process the NTD data, then I merge them. Because these columns over here, these four columns are from the NTD database. All the other columns are from the census. There's processing on this side to aggregate that information on a Per, on, on a per system level from the per zip code level. So that's what process BRT data is doing. And then process NTD data, that's doing a bit of cleaning on these columns from the NTD database. Both of them return a data frame. So then here, all I have to do is merge or concatenate those data frames. I'll just show you. That's what you get is here. Then I can split this data set, train things and, and go from there. I can finally talk about the transitdata.py file, which defines these classes that I used in make data set and preprocess to make my life easier to abstract away some of that complexity. And there's two classes here. BRT data corresponds to the census data sets. NTD data corresponds to the national transit database because they're, they're different. Oh, I don't actually need this anymore. Briefly go through BRT data. 
probably not the best way. But basically, there's a few properties of uh, information that stays constant. So the, the name of the system, the location of it, like Cleveland, Houston, for example, the array of zip codes, then all of this, these properties are actually data frames, income data. So I could actually probably name this better, like income DF, pop DF, whatever. I also have a property for the relevant directories to save and retrieve data from, because I have functions in here that read in CSV data and export CSV data. And I don't want to have to always define the location because they're always going to the process or the raw directory. So that's what this chunk of here is doing. A couple of helper functions for fetching the census API data and loading existing data from that CSV. And here are the data retrieval functions that when you call them here, like brtdataobject.saveIncome. So that downloads the income data from my homemade census data API and saves it into the relevant raw directory. Yeah, this is code from the notebooks that went into this. And that is BRT data, very helpful. NTD data, a bit simpler. And then I have the data retrieval functions. There is only one actually which is save data because that's just how the data set was structured. This again, quite manual. There's, I don't know if there's a way around it. Everything is different and it's pretty simple. I just call the helper function for every year. And that's that. That's me defining the problem, constructing the data set, transforming the data. Then it's this stuff next, train the model, use the model to make predictions. And then from then on, hopefully I can pickle it, deploy it, and then build a front end so you can actually use it. Thanks for watching.